In this video, we're going to look at working with the presets. Now, there's two kinds of presets, global and generator. Global presets stores everything, the sound of each track, all generator engine parameters, and all the 24 pattern slots. And separate from that, we have just generator presets that save the state of all the generators associated with each track. So this is useful for saving and recalling drum sounds. Once we sculpt sounds that we like, we can recall them and load them into tracks independent of the patterns. So let's look at how this works within Break Tweaker. We can get to the preset browser one of two ways. We can click in the black field here with the name and it'll call up the preset browser. Or we can click this little folder icon here and that'll bring it up. Now we can scroll through the different categories and single click on the different presets and it'll load in the sound generators and the patterns all at once. And we can do this while the sequencer is playing. I have one long trigger note sequenced up here and it'll loop over and over again and I can change on the fly. All this with the preset browser open, so very effective. Now, if you have some patterns that you like and you want to audition different kits, you can use this load kit only button, and that's great for maintaining your crafted patterns that you may have customized the way you like and trying with different sounds. And again, you can do it on the fly, and you'll notice that the pattern won't change now, but just the kits will. So all of this with the preset browser open. Now you'll notice that the color changes here from white to green and that indicates that it's a kit only that's been loaded in separate from the patterns. So when you're doing this, auditioning different kits, the name here reflects the name of the kit, not the name that the patterns are derived from. Let's close this for a moment and you'll notice that when you make any changes, you'll see a little asterisk next to the name. Like for example, let's say I'll lengthen a bass note and maybe we'll do a quick little micro edit on it. So we'll see the asterisks there indicating that something's been edited. Now, if we want to save this, we click the Save button to save our modified presets over there, and we'll get a little Save dialog box, and we can rename it, and we can choose which category we want to put it in, for example. And I'll just call this maybe EK at the end, just so we can save it and recall it. So I'll put it in the... You know what? I want to put it in a new category. Let's see how we can create our own new categories. Let me hit Cancel for a moment. And in the main browser here, we have a plus button that allows us to add our own categories. So let me call this EK presets for my own category. And what I'm going to do is hit close now and save this edited patch again. And now we can save it to the category I just created. And I'll add EK at the end. Just so I can identify properly. So there we have the saved patch. And within the preset browser, there are a couple of other fairly self-evident functions here. We can delete presets over here. And here I'm going to remove the preset. It's prompting me and I'm going to go yes. And I still have my category. And if I hit delete, I can delete the category as well. Now we can also, let's say I select a patch, import or export. So if I hit the export button at the bottom of the manager, it's going to export the sequences and any samples used in the generator. So great if you want to move it to another system or send it to someone. And similarly, import will open a file browser to import presets. So important to understand this exports presets, including all the samples used. A couple of other little file management things. We can have this window open at startup or not, and it's good to have it open if you want to load in a preset, obviously. And the manage library button will open up this options panel again, and we can set the location for the library and all the content. This is the default location, but we can press this button, it'll open up a file dialog box and you can navigate. If you've moved your library to a different location, you can navigate to where it is to tell Break Tweaker where to find the samples. Let's click OK. We have a next and previous button over here so we can scroll through next previous patches without having to keep the preset browser open. And again, if you have this load kit only, that's great for navigating linearly through different kits. We have, and that's those buttons over there, we have undo and redo buttons over here. And finally, we have a new button here, which will clear out the sequencer and generator info and allow us to start fresh with absolutely no sounds loaded in and even says new preset there. Now let's take a look at the generator presets. Generator presets saves the state of the three generators that are combined when you're using all three to make up the sound of a track. 
and they can be recalled and applied individually for any of the six tracks. So the generator browser is this little folder icon, and we see a unique one for each track. I've got a general preset loaded in here. I'll just play it for you as is. So let's say, for example, I want to audition some different bass sounds. I like everything else about this, but I want to try some different sounds. So we click the browser, and it opens up, and we can select our categories here. And let's say I'll try this bass. And again, we can do this all on the fly. And of course, I can switch categories or do whatever I want. So we use this to, again, change the sound of the three generators that are used to shape the sound. And as you'll recall, we get into that by this little button here, and we can see generators here. That's the first one, and the second and third aren't currently being used. But it's basically recalling all of these settings over here. Let's close that and go back to the preset browser. And like we saw up here, it works similarly. We can save presets. We can hit this by hitting the save button. Let's say I've modified something in this and I want to save it as a new one. I can hit the save button and it gives me a window to rename my preset and I'll call it EK Base, for example. And there we should have it in there now. There it is, EK Base. And of course I can delete it as well. And same thing, we can create new categories with this plus button. EK Generator Presets, for example and we can delete it like that. So very similar to this and intuitive. And we also have a new button, which again will clear out the entire state of the generators for this track, just like the new button here clears everything out. This clears the generators. So if I click new, I'm gonna go yes. We're gonna see now when I close it that it'll be silent. And if we look inside the generator, we'll see there's nothing loaded in anywhere. So that's great when you wanna zero out all the settings and try and create something from scratch, which we're going to do later in the series. So that's a little overview of the presets, and I'll see you for more in the next video.